So in today's video, we're going to look at break building. So some tips and tricks to get you from players that are making 20 or 30 breaks occasionally, going up to making more 40s and 50s. You might even be a player that's making 50 breaks occasionally and you'd like to make more 50 breaks. So hopefully in this video, some of the tips I'm going to give are things that really helped me when I was first improving to go to that next level of break building and be more consistent when I was scoring. Now the first thing that really helped me when I wanted to try and increase my breaks, so I wanted to move from that 20 to 30 break standard where you get stuck at making those breaks to making more 40s and 50s, was realising that what I was doing was taking all of the available loose balls first and leaving going into a pack of reds right until the last minute. Now that's bad for a couple of reasons. One is that when you go into the pack at the last minute, you're always relying on a little bit of luck and you need to land on one of these balls that is actually in this pack of reds. So you're relying on luck, you may not land on one, and that's going to bring the break to an end. Now, the other reason it's more dangerous is because you need to make sure then, from the last red, that you definitely leave the correct angle to go from the black into the pack of reds. So what's better is to try and go into this pack of reds a bit earlier. So what I used to do, so if we just look at this, what I used to do was take all these loose reds, and just try and get my first break. So I think, right, these reds are out in the open. So I think this is perfect. I can get rid of all these reds and I'm gonna have, so that's uh, eight, nine, 16 there. Coming round to look at this one. Then I would pop this one here. And then maybe now, I would try and go into this pack of reds. I've got one awkward red left here. So this would be my break for 24 here. And now I've got to go into this group of reds and I've got to hope that I land on one. And that's exactly what would happen there. So I've gone into the group of reds and exactly like I said, I left it to the last minute. I haven't landed on a red and that's going to cause my break to come to an end on 24. So the much better way to think about break building here and to take your breaks from that 20 and 30 break to those 30s and 40s is to think about getting these reds into open play a little bit earlier and also playing into them when you're not putting all of your eggs in one basket and you're likely to land on other reserve balls. So in this scenario here I've got a red that pots to either corner so if I pop the black and bring my white up into this area and I haven't got rid of those loose reds, it means that even if I don't land on one of the ones in this group of six, I'm very likely to land on one of the ones to the corner. And then I've also got these reds in open play and I've got more balls to pot, which is going to get my breaks to that next level. So I know we don't always get an exact scenario like this, but we've often got reds at some point that are close to corners or reds over the middle. And that's when I'm choosing to play into the pack because that's going to give you chances of getting these balls open and also landing on one of those backup uh, balls there. So let's pop this first red, leave a little angle on the black so that we can go into the reds. So we got that nice little angle. And now when I play into these reds this time, I know that as long as I come up here, I'm very likely to be on both reds to the corner pocket there. So just pot in the black now. And you can see now that that time I've brought reds into play. I've landed on the one that I wanted to here. I'm also on this one here, but that is going to get reds into open play. It gives you much more options and it means that instead of putting all of the loose balls and then having to go into the pack and hoping that you land on one, I've already gone into the pack. I've got more balls available and I've landed on the two that were acting as those backup shots there. Now, massively important here, and you'll hear this all the time when you're watching the snooker on the TV and you're listening to the commentary, you don't want to leave yourself straight on the black. It massively reduces your options. You can obviously only take the white ball forwards or backwards, and then you can't get the white into a good position to make the pot on the next red nice and easy. So this would be a common example here. I've got a red, and I can pot this red here, so I would need the rest, but I can pot this red here and play a little shot, just roll the red in for the black, so you'll see that, very common. And then what players do is they'll leave themselves too straight on the black here. So I'm too straight, and both of these reds now, it's incredibly difficult for me from this position now 
to get to this red here, which is difficult. I'd prefer the white to be right behind it if I'm playing that red because it's a, a tricky pot to the middle. And this red here, I can't get the white over to it because I've left myself too straight on the black. So very, very important here, you hear this all the time, if you make sure that you start thinking and forming that habit of leaving yourself angles on the black, it just is going to take your break building to that next level because you're just massively increasing your options. So all I've got to do on this shot here is just play a, a, a stop shot with the white and that's going to leave me an angle on the black. So if I just do that, now this time I've now got a nice angle on the black and I can play for any red that I want to here. So I can play a run through and just come onto this red here or I could even stun off the cushion and try and move this awkward red here. If I was actually break building here uh, and I was in a frame and it was towards the end of the break if I've got the frame one I'd probably play for this one because it means I can move this last awkward difficult red I've got the perfect angle to get onto it now and then I can take the one that's not too bad after. So if I was to just play this now I can come off the cushion off those like that and I'm like I say I'm right in behind this red now makes it much better I can pop this red leave an angle on the blue and get to that other red. So always try and make sure that you're leaving those angles on the black. Now, another big thing that's gonna help you with your break building and hopefully get you to that next little stage and making bigger breaks is using reds that are, that are at the bottom of the pack to your advantage. So you can see that this red here is at the bottom of the pack and it would be easy for me to pop this black from where I am here and bounce off the cushion and try and leave myself on this red here and pop the red. It's a great example of where I could pop the black, leave myself a little bit low on this red, and then I'll be able to either roll through and disturb all the reds or screw back off the red depending on where I land and bring all the reds into play off this red knowing that I'm going to leave myself a shot on the black. So I think at first, like I say, when you're trying to go up to that next little notch when you're in your break building and get those bigger breaks, it's easy to just pop the black and try and play on this red. But if you try and play on it and leave yourself a little bit short, that's really going to help you because that means that we can now bring out some other reds when potting that red. So let's pot the black. So I pot the black. Now try and leave myself short on this red, which you can see I've done nicely there. Let's just get the black. And then it's all just about trying to work out where you, whether you need to run through or whether you're going to play a screw shot. So it looks as though on this shot here, if I play the run through, I'm running almost full ball into this red and I'm probably going to leave myself a bit too high. So I'm going to try and play a screw shot off these reds, trying to push through and leave myself somewhere back on the black here. But this is going to bring other reds into play now. So I can pop this red, bring other reds into play and hopefully stay on the black. So you see there now, I've potted that red, I've stayed nicely on the black and you can see that I've now developed lots of reds, I've got lots of reds in play and it was just by thinking in that next little level of saying instead of just playing on that red, let's leave myself low on that red so I can pot it, develop all the other reds and now I've got a great chance with some more reds in open play and hopefully that'll take your breaks to that next little level. So, as always, I hope you found this video useful. They were some key things that I found useful when I was trying to really improve my break building, score more consistently, and go from the current level I was at in terms of making breaks and move up to that next level and just score a bit more consistently in the balls. So, as always, if you did enjoy this video, please give the video a like. If you do watch these videos and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing because that just really helps me to keep this content coming. So I do lots of instructional videos like this, I do practice routine videos, and I also do some fun videos of exhibition shots as well. So please consider subscribing if you haven't. You can also support me on Patreon, the link for that is in the description below. I'm available for one-to-one -one coaching sessions, that's what I do on the table working with players all the time, so my email address and my website description is in the description box below. So if you want to get in touch, have a look at that and please do. And as always, thanks for watching. Cheers.